Hi everybody, this is E.T. and this is Samson, or one of the many artistic representations of him, the last subject of the Bible's book of Judges. Samson lived approximately 3,000 years ago, give or take a few centuries, and he was possessed of incredible strength, which several times was visited on his Philistine oppressors. There exist, despite numerous statues, portraits, and actors, all attempting to affect his likeness, no biblical description of Samson. But one might conclude, given accounts of his mighty feats of strength and killings of both men and beasts, that Samson possessed a large frame and bulging fast twitch muscles. Although pronounced sharply defined musculature is not always a feature of power and strength. Here in Praises is Samson's story, as writ by the Israelites, living unhappily under the control of the neighboring Philistines. Samson was born to a previously barren woman who was visited by an angel. And the angel said, and I quote, You will become pregnant and have a son. Now then, drink no wine or other fermented drink and do not eat anything unclean because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Nazarite means, speaking generally, one who abstains from alcohol, does not cut his hair on his head, and avoids contact with the dead. The story resumes with Samson's maturity, at which point he demands against his parents' wishes to marry a Philistine woman. I'll leave it to biblical scholars to decide if Samson's behavior throughout his story is dictated by his own or the Lord's will. Whatever, it bodes ill for the Philistines. On the way to claim his wife, that's in the town of Timnah, suddenly a young lion roared at him and the Spirit of the Lord, says the Bible, rushed on him. And he tore the lion apart barehanded. Later, after the woman's betrayal, having to do with a wager, a very angry Samson slays by himself 30 Philistine men. Later, the Philistines force Samson's fellow Judeans to deliver him to them, and they do it. They bind him with a rope, but all by Samson's own instruction, which, like burning flax, melted off his hands. That allowed Samson to grab the jawbone of an ass or a donkey and slay 1,000 Philistines. Now at this point, let me add something. It can be assumed to be that 1,000, equivalent to something like, well, a lot. Now that's a word that does have specific meaning if you're talking about amounts, weights, and acreage. But in our general conversation, a lot implies something generally pretty big. Samson's story continues. He again falls in love with another Philistine woman, her name Delilah, who, like the previous wife, is commissioned by her people to betray Samson. By finding the secret to his strength, note, before putting too much hate on Delilah, consider that the Philistines of her day made offers that, well, few could refuse, such as offering to burn to death her and her family. Three times she will ask Samson for the secret to his strength. Three times he lies to her. Three times Philistine men show up. Find to their regret, Samson is still in Rambo mode. But after Delilah's persistent nagging, Samson relented and told her the truth. He said, no razor has ever been used on my head because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. Now at this point, an alert layman might ask, was either party, Delilah or Samson, aware that the other must be aware that, well, number one, she'd repeatedly been setting Samson up, and two, he knew that she had been setting him up. One might also ask, Why did Samson reveal the truth behind his power? He must have known bad things would happen. Was it his ego? Well, that's doubtful, in that he knew he'd lose his power, and the Philistines would, at the least, kill him. Or was it 
all at the Lord's behest. Earlier, the Bible did say, when Samson had told his parents to arrange that first marriage to the Philistine girl, quote, his parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. Well, here's what happened. Samson told Delilah the secret, and she cut off his seven braids. The result, his strength did leave him. He was captured by the Philistines, who gouged out his eyes, forced him to work grinding a prison mill, and later brought him down to Gaza to entertain dignitaries at their temple that was dedicated to Dagon, where all the dignitaries were assembled therein. Then Samson, bound to two pillars that were holding up the temple, asked the Lord for one more burst of strength, possible now with his regrown hair. Then, I'm quoting from the Bible, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one, his left hand on the other, Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than when he lived. If we accept Samson's power is coming from the divine, then all his story can be explained. But the atheist, say a devotee of the likes of Chris Hitchens or Daniel Dennett's Peter Singer, uh, Richard Dawkins, even Ayn Rand, may well take issue with the accounts, or at least the authority behind them, which raises another question. Could an ordinary man, but one with extraordinary power, perform Samson's feats? Well, if the lion was weakened, if the numbers of Philistines killed was exaggerated a bit, and if Samson was placed advantageously in relation to all of those advancing enemies, And if the temple pillars were spaced apart just right in relation to Samson's arms, and if those pillars were very tall and thin, too much so for the weighted structure of the temple, and if Samson adrenaline spiked to the degree, say, that allowed a grandmother not long ago to lift off an automobile that fell onto her grandson, then, well, yeah, all these feats could be possible. Consider that Paul Anderson performed on television a back lift of three tons. That's unequal to this day. Okay, keep in mind that this is but one layman's account. You'd better check with a biblical authority for more information. This is E.T. Hit that like button or that awful other one. That all depends on whether or not you like this video. But do. You have no choice here. Subscribe. Thanks. Bye.